everyone, I think Prusa Slicers officially won me over with their new way of generating supports that's not only gonna save you a good amount of time, but also a good chunk of change when it comes to 3D printing all of your favorite things. And what I'm talking about is the new Prusa Slicer update. This is actually the alpha release. So it's the 2.6 alpha release that's available over on GitHub. It's not officially available just yet. It's not a full-fledged release, so you might have some bugs in there if you're running it, but it works on Mac, PC, Linux. Is there any other operating system? I don't know. But one of the core new features are these crazy new tree supports that work so incredibly well and are so efficient at saving you on your print time as well as the amount of material that you're gonna be using, which again, is just gonna end up saving you more money in the long run. There's also a few other standout features with this upcoming release, like the ability when you go through and slice a print in half, you can now add pegs to either side of those prints, which is really cool. And I'll be showing off here in just a few minutes as well as one small issue that I think I'm having with that. But the other is somewhat minor that might be useful for some of you out there, which is the ability to add text to your 3D prints. Now, I personally am not seeing this super useful, but in some use cases, I suppose it could be, but one area that I do think would be kind of cool is when I'm running off in 3D printing things, I always forget like a month later, a week later, even a day later, what were the settings that I used for that particular 3D print? So what I could do is imprint that on the bottom of that file so that when I go and run off and 3D print it, I've got that information saved right on the bottom of the print forever. And I wouldn't necessarily need that as much on the FDM side, but on the resin side of things, that would be extremely helpful when it comes to testing some of the things that I'm printing. And honestly, I wish that was over in Lychee Slicer, more so because I know that's one of the primary slicers that a lot of folks are using for the resin 3D prints. But let's get back on topic here about these crazy tree supports that are now an option over in the support section that you can enable there within the support type dropdown. You're also gonna see a number of different settings that you can find on the very bottom to help you further refine your tree supports that you might be printing with. One quick call out before I even show off a majority of these prints is something that I've just now realized while further playing with it. I don't even have any prints to show this off, but you can adjust the diameter of the supports, the minimum diameter, which is gonna be crazy helpful when you're printing larger objects. A lot of cosplay art objects or just in general, larger 3D prints, you're not gonna necessarily want some of these really small pillars that are gonna end up generating and are gonna have a lot harder time of maintaining the support of those on some of these really large 3D prints. So keep that in mind. I would think adjusting that to a 0.4 or a 0.6 diameter might be really helpful. And in fact, I have a two day print that I have running that's almost done printing that I wish I would have known about that feature before starting that print. And I have not been shy about my love and hate with Simplify 3D, but one of the biggest reasons why I've continued to use Simplify 3D is I've been able to get prints that just generate it faster, they print faster, even when I'm using the same print settings across other slicers. And the supports, the ability for me to visually see where I'm placing the supports is just beautiful. I love it. It just, it works so well, like, 80% of the time with that slicer. And what's really wild to me is now with this new update from Prusa Slicer, I'm now getting faster prints with these new tree support options versus what I'm gonna be able to print out of Simplify 3D using, again, those exact same settings. And not only that, it's using less material, which means I'm gonna be able to print more things with the same rolls of filament and just get more bang for the buck for all this filament that I'm buying. And I think it's because these are just, it's super thin and they're narrow and they're hollow. And I'm gonna try and take some of these. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, that comes off so clean. I've been wanting to remove these supports for a few days now and I'm so, look at how clean that came off. There was like no effort involved with it and the backside where this printed is relatively clean still. The, oh. I'm, I'm loving these. I'm absolutely loving these. And Simplify 3D, I mean, Simplify 3D, this still, these still pop off super easily. This is, again, one of the big reasons why I love 
that slicer. Now, can you tell the difference between these two 3D prints and which came from Prusa Slicer and which came from Simplify 3D? Because I can't and I honestly mix them up when I put them down on the table and I have no idea which is which. But what's incredible to me is one of these printed two hours faster than the other and again, used a good bit less material than the other did. And something else to keep in mind when you're actually working with a file and using these tree supports is if you use the auto support function, it might work okay. However, in most cases, what I was seeing is it was just putting down too few of the supports and not enough of them. So I was going back through and using some of the manual painting functionality that's available in there or some of the automatic painting options to paint the overhangs and then doing some of the magic selection functionality that's in there and then generating my support which is gonna give you just a little bit better of a st stable printing when it comes to printing off some of these things. You might be able to get away with some of those extremely light supports that are in there when you automatically run it. But for the most part, if you're running a larger print job, it's probably a better safe bet to actually lay down a few custom supports as well as some of those automatic ones. Also check out this crazy cool Nightwing mask that printed in just a few hours using those tree supports. It's crazy clean coming off the Neptune 3 Pro and fits perfectly on my face here. I don't know how you stick those on your face. <laughs> and one of the other functions that I think is gonna be incredibly helpful for a lot of folks is the ability to slice up your models and then add pins in them. This is typically something that you have to do very manually that you could do in Mesh Mixer or in another 3D software to actually pull this off. What you're not gonna be able to do within Prusa Slicer is mask off regions. So when you go to actually cut through your model, it's gonna do a full slice through whatever it is that you're cutting through. That's something just to be aware of. And you can even choose different kinds of options that you're gonna to wanna to put in there, whether it's a cylindrical or a hexagon or something else that they might have in there as a shape that you can then run off in 3D print. Now, the one issue that I'm seeing, so I actually ended up taking this dagger, was able to get it printed surprisingly, was I thought this thing was gonna to topple over to be honest, but it originally wasn't gonna fit on the build volume of the Neptune 3 Pro. And this is a perfect example of being able to slice it at the blade, add the pins and get this printed. The pins that printed, I thought this might be the case, just are not going to fit inside the holes that were generated on these particular prints. And typically what I believe modelers do with this, because I've printed a number of these and I've run into this exact same issue, is the pins will be scaled down ever so slightly, maybe by 1% or 2% so that it better fits into the hole that's generated in that particular file. So this is something that you could hopefully do directly in Prusa Slicer by just directly selecting those pins and making them a few percentages smaller and then running off and printing those and then adding them in. The other thing to keep in mind is uh, with the blade here, yeah, the holes ended up having supports generated in them. I didn't think to put in some support blockers in there and block the holes from being uh, filled in and there's no way for me to cl easily clean those out. So, you know, this is probably a lot easier on some of the larger files that you might be printing, but I thought this was just a good example of being able to print the blade and the handle and then you know, being able to use the pens to secure them back together if I could get those pens to actually print and fit into the holes. There's one other feature that I haven't talked about and that's the support for the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, and the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max, which just so coincidentally, Elegoo happens to be the sponsor of today's video. So if you're interested in more information about these budget friendly, amazing FDM 3D printers, you can find links to those down below. And Elegoo just recently dropped the price of their Elegoo Jupiter, their large resin 3D printer that you can find over on the website. And now if you spend over a thousand dollars, you can use the code listed below to save an extra $50 off anything that you purchase. I also want to take a minute to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here. If you're interested in my 3D printer settings, including my Elgu Neptune 3D printer settings, the profiles that I used for Prusa Slicer, I'm going to be sharing with all my Patreon members. So if you're interested in that, you can find more information about it over in my Patreon. So for the most part, these supports have been really easy to remove. However, this print right here, I think it might have to do with whatever filament that you're using. I'm not sure if there's a particular property with it that just makes it more difficult to remove than others because some of these are just a good bit tougher to remove than the other supports that I previously removed on these 
prints here. So maybe some of those settings might need to be dialed in just ever so slightly. And if you wanna try out those supports for yourself or any of the other new features available in the Prusa Slicer Alpha release, I'll have links to that down below. And if you were wondering what the heck I'm printing and trying to show off here in this video, it was actually the broken Ant-Man helmet from the upcoming movie that's available from Yosh Studios. I just need to figure out how to get all this thing assembled and glooped together here. I'll probably show that off online somewhere. Hey, thanks so much for watching all. I'll see you next time. By the way, if you were wondering what that big print is, it's a multi-day print using these new tree supports. Crazy excited to show this off. I've got a really big video that I'm working on for next week.